Can you recommend me any books about how to be feminine, please? Oh, my friends, I've read so many books on how to be feminine back in the uh, early 2000s. Did it help me? Honestly, no, it didn't. I hired very expensive coaches back in the days. Did it help me? No. I even watched the interview once with JLo where she was sharing how coaching didn't help her to become more feminine. But that's what I'm telling you, my friends. Most of the people who are coaching you how to become feminine, they're not feminine themselves. And so in order to really become feminine, you got to do the spiritual work. You either got to meditate, you either got to do the affirmations, and then the masculine energy going to start peeling off because you're going to start becoming a woman yourself. Because right now, most women are just attached to work, money, and material world. All of that is masculine energy. So how can anybody can really teach you to become a feminine, really? It's a really deep work. Otherwise, you'll be doing a superficial work. It's like doing uh, chipmunks and squirrels. And I'm talking about dragons and dinosaurs because a woman being a masculine is like a dinosaur. Men do not like it. Men intimidated. They, they cannot stand a woman. They're looking at it. Who, what is this? Looks like a woman, has butt, has breast, but doesn't act like it. Acts like a man. And so it's a, it's a process. And it's not... A fast process because everybody wants really fast results. Only cats give a birth fast, but everything else takes time, my friends. So again, you can join my group. And again, every other Wednesday we'll be meeting. Or you can just watch my YouTube videos on TikTok. Three minutes is not enough for you to learn how to become feminine. Let's be honest. You know, if you guys have the expectation in three minutes to become feminine or learn something, you know, it's kind of a la la land fantasy. Yeah. See you difficulty with widows, adult children controlling dad's pocketbook. It happened to my mother actually, so I can understand your challenges. But at the same time, you cannot be stuck on what's not working in a relationship, whether there are kids in the way, where there's a deceased mom. You gotta concentrate on what's working, and you gotta accept your husband with his kids. Yes, kids will be jealous because you are a new stepmom. Uh, you are a possibility that a man will give you some money or inheritance. They're worried. But selfish kids are scared. But the loving kids will be happy for their dad. And so it's in a way your karma that you attracted a man with kids like this. And so your job is not to just accept him but to accept his greedy children who are worried that dad will find a love in his, I don't know, 50s or 60s. And so the more you're going to do the meditation and wishing not only him happiness, but his children, the children going to start slowly accepting you, but they will start accepting you when you're going to overcome that something is wrong with them, when you will accept them first. It's not easy, but you are wise. Mm, I remember you're Eastern European, right? And so you can overcome this, I promise you. What do you do when she's playing hard to get? You see, my friends, a woman, when she is a high value, when she's confident, she's not maybe hard to play. She just knows herself and her value. And so I shared in one of my programs uh, six stages how to create a happy and lasting relationship which I recommend to every one of you it's probably hour and a half or two hours long on YouTube I cut it on a lot of chunks and I shared there that a woman can fall in love with even a short fat bold man and I will tell you a story one of my favorite uh, psychotherapists shared the story he said there was a Queen Isabel, and she had a gardener. Uh, we'll call the gardener John. And John was short, bold, overweight, and not handsome at all. But one day, John Gardner sent a note to a queen and said, Queen, have a beautiful day, and look down to the rose I saved you. So a queen wakes up in the morning, looks down, and she looks at the flower, and then she looks at the John Gardner. It's like... Did he have a right to send me this note? Who he is? How dare he is? I'm a queen. 
And the next day, he sent her a rose this time and said, have a beautiful day. You are the most gorgeous and sweetest queen in the world. And she looked at her assistant and she said, I can't believe he's sending me note again and the roses, throw it away. And so every day, John Gardner was sending her flowers with a note. Two weeks later, Queen wakes up and looks at her assistant and she says, what John sent us today? And she says, oh, he, sends, he sent you a beautiful pink peons, peonies. I, I don't know how they called in English. And what did the note said? It said, Queen, today I have a big surprise for you. So for that, you have to come down. And Queen said, wow, John Gardner has a right to ask me to go downstairs. He's just a gardener. But she said, okay, I'm curious. So she went downstairs and Gardner looked at her and said, good morning, Queen. You look beautiful as always. And today I have a surprise for you. But this surprise is at the end of the alley. She said, I have to walk with you 20 minutes. He said, if you want a surprise, yes. So as they walk on the alley, he's asking her, so what is your favorite color? What is your favorite flowers? What is your favorite horse? What is your favorite hobby? What is your favorite time of the year? What is your favorite food? He asked her so many questions. And at the end, when they got to the alley, he gave her the most beautiful bouquet of her favorite flowers because he found out what her favorite flowers is. And as they're walking back in the alley, they were asking, he was asking her more questions. Next morning, she woke up and she said, please, what is the note? What is the flowers today? And two months later, she looked at her assistant and she said, what am I going to do? Now I'm fully in love with John Gardner. He's the only person who understands me fully. So what I'm trying to say, my friends, is that a woman is looking not for the looks, not even how much money you make. She's looking for your intelligence. John Gardner did not even talk to her. He was just asking her questions and was getting to know her. And so if you truly want to get a woman, ask her right questions, get to know her. And even if you are poor and broke and not good looking, remember the story. Even John Gardner got the Queen Isabel in love with him. So I hope this answers your question. Are there certain foods women should eat? <laughs> Hard to you, my friends, as well. Are there certain foods women should eat to enhance femininity? For example, women should eat sweets. But most of the time, woman is stressed. And when does she eat sweets? She eats sweets after she gets to work. And what does she eat? Chocolate, ice cream. And this is not the sweets to enhance your femininity. Sweets should be something that a woman can bake with honey, uh, nuts, and something that is healthy. And she got to eat the sweets before 12 o'clock. Also, what really helps with femininity is eating vegetables after 6 o'clock. All the vegetables that have been grown and under the moonlight. These are zucchinis, your squashes, your pumpkins, all of these vegetables. Because moon has a feminine energy and sun has a masculine energy. And so all the vegetables that grow under the moon, they're feminine. And so if a woman eats them, during the evening, she enhances her femininity. Really good question. How to be feminine if a man is always expecting things but never gives? Friends, if you are dating someone who is constantly expe expecting and taking and taking, why would you even be in a relationship with a man like that? It's not healthy for you. A feminine woman values herself and will be with a man who appreciates her who loves her, who gives her and not takes and not takes. So you got to really question yourself. Why are you with him? Because it's hurting you and your self-esteem will go down with a man like that. So if you're not married, you're not committed. Start dating other men who would make you feel good. I feel ashamed for my baby. Feel like I don't deserve a new man. Yeah, that's a problem with your low self-esteem. you got to really work on your self-esteem. And the best way to work on your self-esteem is to cut every toxic person who puts you down. Start having the boundaries. And obviously, again, I'll tell you again and again, 
early morning meditation mantra affirmation or a prayer that's gonna start healing your soul so you'll feel like it's easy to put boundaries with people like that yeah i have two children i got it yeah how should a feminine woman feel if her husband tells her she gained weight how should she handle it by the way Smart man, we will never ever tell a woman you gain weight because a woman knows that hundred times a day she gained the weight and it hurt us. And so if a man tells you that you've gained weight, say, honey, that hurts me deeply when you say things like that. And I don't want to punch you by telling and criticizing you. So I request that you stop saying this. Otherwise, we're going to really going to go into uh, a, a battle. And do we want a battle? Because I already know that I've gained weight. And you got to start thinking. How can you start decreasing stress, working less, and doing less so you can start losing weight? Because a woman eats because she's overwhelmed, uh, anxious, stressed, and depressed. And she's turning to food. And obviously, you'll be gaining weight. And so cut your husband off and tell him, you cannot talk to me like this. This is not accepted. Yeah. Could you please give some pointers on focusing during meditation? my friends you see you're asking for mm, a quick answer and there is no quick way of learning the meditation how to do it correctly you know how to sit correctly you know how to breathe correctly you gotta start with baby steps of doing only five minutes meditation and how to even start thinking about me uh, during the meditation it's all difficult process and that's why when i'm starting to teach um, my students right now my friends they cannot even breathe correctly during the meditation because you got to breathe in such a way through the stomach that you will feel the air going all the way to your head, cleansing um, your chakras through your entire body. Will you be able to do it if I'm telling you right now in one or three minutes? Absolutely not. So meditation is very difficult. And so it's a process. And that's why it takes between four to six months to learn how to do it correctly. If you continue doing it every day, five minutes after a week, maybe six minutes after a month, maybe 12 minutes. And then you get to 30 minutes and or even longer. And then you're going to start getting a massive results. But in the beginning, it's just five minutes. So watch my YouTube video starting next week. I'm going to upload how to meditate correctly. The video is going to be hour and a half long, but you will be learning step by step. First week, it's going to be baby steps, basic meditation. Two weeks later, a little bit more intermediate, a little bit more in intermediate, then intermediate, then a little bit more advanced, then advanced, then really advanced. And you will get to really practice how to do meditation correctly. So I cannot explain it here. It takes an hour and a half to just explain basic meditation. Yeah. I do it. I know how to raise my kundalini easily. Wow. Very impressed really impressed wonderful what's a good morning meditation any suggestion from youtube um again my friends if you just want a really basic first of all stop thinking that guided meditation will get you anywhere it just relaxes your mind for 30 minutes an hour or two hours that's it if you really want to do meditation you got to learn it correctly or if you want just basic, not meditation, mantra or affirmation, just put a spiritual music and just wish everyone happiness. But meditation, I cannot explain. It takes hours, literally. Let's see. What do you do when a man loves you and wants to give but doesn't flirt? He tries sometimes. By the way, most of the men who are providers and protectors, not all, but most, they're so focused on the career, they're not bad boys. They don't know how to flirt. They don't. Flirting and charisma, it comes with few men, but a lot of times they're bad boys. And so don't try to make a good boy, good man, and bad boy in one. You got to get, if you want a relationship, serious relationship and family, you got to let go of this. Or oh, he has to be fine, he has to be charismatic, he has to flirt. You got to let go. And you got to be in the reality of accepting man the way he is. Because again, providers and protectors, a lot of times, they're not good with flirting. They're not good with... Sometimes they have sense of humor. Sometimes they don't. Their main goal is to provide and protect and they appreciate you. And so every benefit is plus. But don't try to like see like I need it all. Because it's impossible. Yeah, we have this fantasy in our mind that... 
we want it all but we gotta come down we cannot make a good man and bad boy in one and every woman and every man wants it but it's impossible so yeah so i'm talking to a man who says he's been through a hard life every day i think it's a bad sign yes a man not supposed to share his emotions and uh, bad experiences or bad emotions and dumping it on you uh, a woman's supposed to do that but not a man and so request him can you please not share all your troubles you can find a therapist you can go to church you can start doing meditation or something or share with your guy friends but not give it to me because i get overwhelmed i have already challenges in my life i have already problems and so gently guide him we as a women gotta educate our men how to behave how to make love to us how to kiss us how to flirt with us all of it it's on us yeah so with that friends it's almost nine o'clock here in atlanta my family's back uh, my dog is coming in and out <laughs> so i don't want to be interrupted i'm gonna start putting our son to bed but i want to acknowledge you and i want to thank you for being vulnerable for being open for your desire to learn and grow because we're responsible for ourselves we're responsible for our happiness for our emotional well-being for our physical well-being and acknowledge yourself for being here you're really learning and you growing and when you're growing you will not only grow you're gonna start touching other people's life your family will be impacted your uh, kids will be impacted your friends and then communities so with that said I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your trust for your desire to learn for following for asking me questions and I look forward to seeing you next time hopefully this week or next week and for those who are really interested to be in my meditational feminine group it's only for women it's going to start this wednesday please send me a question i want to join and i check all of your comments and i will add you as a friend and then send you all the information with that said my friends namaste i love you i cherish you i appreciate you so have a good night